What's up, YouTube? This is your friend, the Neighborhood Movie Nerd, back to give you guys everything that is going on in the world of movies and TV. And happy 2018, sort of, only because this is technically my second official review for a movie that was released within the year of 2018. I know that I've been churning out a bunch of stuff lately for the previous year of 2017, but we are ready to get back into the grind of 2018. I haven't been doing a lot of reviews lately for this year, but let's be honest with ourselves. We don't really care about a lot of the movies that have come out so far because it has only been one month and most of the movies that come out in January are total crap. But we're into the month of February now, and as the last couple of years have shown, February has actually been some grounds for actually having some quality movies. You had the Lego movie in 2014, you had Kingsman in 2015, and the last year, obviously, the juggernaut that proved that February could actually be a prime spot for movies that could actually make money and be good at the same time, Deadpool. Unfortunately enough, if there is one thing that this movie that I just saw has shown, it is that February still has some very bad movies that come out. So with that introduction, this is my review for Clint Eastwood's next movie, The 1517 to Paris. Don't try and take any shortcuts. Do what you know is right. We've been chosen for this great work. I don't know, man. You ever just feel like life is just pushing us towards something? Like some greater purpose? So the 1517 to Paris takes place around a terrorist attack that occurred in 2015 on a train. I don't remember the specific name of it, traveling from Amsterdam to Paris, in which three American men and one British man managed to successfully stop a terrorist with a machine gun who was planning on taking multiple lives. But in the film, the unique thing about this is that, similar to a movie that came out a couple of years ago, Eastwood actually casts the actual heroes themselves, Anthony Sadler, Alex Gardados, and Spencer Stone, in the actual parts as themselves, forcing them to relive this traumatic event in their history. Now, the movie that I am referring to, that this film has a lot of similarities to, came out in 2011. It was called Acts of Valor. It was a movie about Marines that, rather than starring actors, actually starred actual Marines in the part. And the film was a critical and commercial flop, considering the fact that, well, you know, Marines aren't freaking actors. So, this movie has so many different problems with it that I don't even know where to begin. Number one being, yes, the obvious factor that, yeah, it's the real-life guys, and no offense to them, they can't act for shit. Besides that obvious fact, this film manages to take one step further, and not only is it boring and non-compelling in terms of just the fact that these guys, they don't come off as real characters, so therefore there's no kind of a natural arc or progression in this movie, it's the fact that this film is just poorly made. The script that they have is absolutely awful, the acting for the most part is atrocious, which sucks because there are some actors in here that I really enjoy who are completely all but wasted, and Eastwood just continues to show with this movie that he is just getting too old to keep directing movies because his one take style really shows in this movie as just being bland and boring. Probably the worst thing about this movie is the fact of Eastwood kind of undercuts what he's trying to go for because he's trying to honor these guys by having them appear as themselves in a movie about them that is supposed to be a thing about, you know, American heroism, but in a in actuality, he really kind of just makes them come off as douchebags and honestly makes this film come off as kind of offensive. There's some really questionable choices that they have these kids do, and I'm glad that it's based off of the truth of the fact of the matter, but still, when you have, like, this kid pulling out, like, dozens upon dozens of toy guns, I don't know, that just feels a little bit discomforting. But once it moves on from them being kids into their actual adult portions, Alec and Anthony, first off, kind of get the shaft in order to focus on Spencer, and besides the fact that this segment feels like a military hand job, there's also the fact that this movie does what I hate that most movies do in order to try and show character development, which is basically just make every other character around them an asshole. As if this movie wasn't already obnoxious and on the nose as it was. Oh, and by the way, for the actual actors that they get in here? Yeah, Jenna Fisher, Pam Beasley herself is in this movie as uh, Alex's mom. It doesn't help that they stick her next to Judy Greer, who of course is awful in this movie, but it's Judy Greer, so you expect that. But from Jenna Fisher, I kind of expected a lot more, but even she wasn't enough to save this movie. I really do feel bad shitting on this movie as much as I am because uh, these guys are heroes. They actually, these are the real friggin' people. And I just feel like Eastwood, by casting them, honestly, he was really doing more of a disservice to their legacy than helping them. And that's the most disappointing thing about this movie, is the fact that for a biopic that is supposed to be about American heroes doing something for the good of the world, this movie ends up coming off as simultaneously a military handjob, a really offensive statement, 
about just American tourists and also just it's almost like this film was a lesson on how not to make a movie it's not compelling it's not interesting and as true to life as these events may have been that still doesn't necessarily make for an entertaining story because in the end films have to be compelling in some way and no amount of truth can save a movie from being boring and no amount of truth can save a terrible terrible script that is why this movie only gets one out of ten stars I was intrigued going into this movie just to see what it was going to be like, and it turned out to be crap. So that is my review for the 1517 to Paris. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Also, be sure to click that like button and that subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter at Movie Nerd Review. Also, head on over to my website, MovieNerdReviews.com, and be sure to keep coming in every week for the consistent amount of reviews that are about to be coming out. And coming up next week, that's the big one, Black Fucking Panther. I'll see you guys next time. Go!